Good afternoon, everybody. Tom Cherry Holmes with the FujiNet Project, and I wanted to make a quick video showing the process that I'm doing to develop the second version of the NCIO handler. For this, uh, I am writing this handler in Assembler and using tools on the Atari to both develop, edit, assemble, and debug the code that I generate. The reason that I'm doing this in this manner is precisely because while the CIO handler that I wrote in C is a good prototype and it allowed me to demonstrate the feasibility of the approach that I had taken in developing this, there are a number of problems uh, that are present in developing a CIO handler in C. The biggest of which is that the C compiler uses the zero page quite extensively for various internal functions and thus uh, is actually somewhat difficult to uh, save and preserve the zero page effectively coming in and out of routines that will be jumped directly to by the CIO. So I'm trying to sidestep that issue uh, entirely by writing this version entirely in assembler. We have right here uh, a rather crowded development environment here, a lot of windows open, but I wanted to show you a little glimpse into the process of basically making a change, going through, compiling, uh, assembling the change, testing the change, and using the debugger to ensure that everything is working correctly. But right now, I'm going to take and move the Ubuntu window out of the way here and we're just going to concentrate on the Atari window and on the listing that I have generated over here on the right hand side. Now the listing I have generated over here on the right hand side is actually courtesy of the FujiNet's printer emulation. I have it set to an Atari 1027 which I will go ahead and I actually need to take and go ahead and tell it to reset again since I reset the FujiNet since then. Go ahead. You currently can change between Atari 820, Atari 822, Atari 1027, and a special screen capture mode, which is called Grantic. We go ahead, change that, make sure that's in place, and we will go ahead and I will reboot the environment here and get into it. Now for development here I chose to use OSS DOS XL because it stays out of the way well enough while I take and develop the CIO handler. And actually I need to, now that I think about it, I actually need to make one adjustment and put this into Atari 800 mode for maximum compatibility with Amoeba, the debugger that I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the help here. I'm going to lose high speed as a result of this, but that's okay. So here we have everything up ready to go. We're good to go. And actually, hold on just one moment. I'm going to pause for just a split second. And I'm actually going to take and put a uh, basic cartridge in now that I've switched over to 800 mode. OK, pardon me for the rather abrupt edit there. I just had to take and put the basic Excel cartridge in just, uh, just in case here. So I'm going to make one adjust uh, edit to the code here and I'm currently working on the close routine and one of the things that the close routine actually needs to do is it actually needs to take and assert interrupts. It also needs to do a put flush but that will come in when I actually implement the put routines but I'll, so I'll do that a bit later. So we'll go ahead and just add in the bits and pieces to call the DIPRCD routines which I've already written. If we go down to the listing down at the very bottom here, we'll see a series of miscellaneous subroutines for getting the receive length, clearing the receive length, enabling the proceed interrupt, and disabling the proceed interrupt. And all we really have to do is go ahead and make, a, make sure that we call those routines. 
For this, I'm actually going to use uh, the action editor, which uh, Peter Dell graciously broke out into an XEX file. It loads fast, works extremely well. Go ahead and control shift R to retrieve. And we will load our assembler file. And as you can see, it loads really fast. It's even faster with high speed IO on. And more importantly, it scrolls really fast. And here we have our text form of the listing that we currently have over here on the right hand side. I'm going to go down and search real quick for my close routine. I'm going to search again. Come down here. And right now we have our first is a call to dev ID in to get the device ID number. I need to take and do a JSR over to uh, DIPRCD, which is over here. So let me go ahead, flip into insert mode, control shift I. And I shall insert those characters over. And we'll go ahead and put that in place. Groovy, we're good. We'll go ahead and write out the result since we're happy with that. Now that that's written out, we can go ahead and control shift M, which would normally take us to the monitor, but in this version of the cartridge, it takes us to a mini monitor, which gives us just enough to do editor commands as well as bounce out to DOS. There we go. Now back out in DOS, we can now assemble the target. And since this doesn't support any command line routines, I just have to run it as is. It's a shame they did not use the uh, get record CIO command, because that would have meant I would have been able to script this. Oh well. So, our source is on drive 2. And we want to output to drive 2 as well as indev.com. And furthermore, we actually want to, in addition to, if I was just assembling this and I wasn't sure if this was going to compile or not, I could. Now with the printer reset, everything configured correctly, I can send the listing out to Fujinet's printer device. And as part of that listing, I can ask for a full cross-reference, which will tell me the location of every single symbol on the printout, where it is on the printout. So with that, we assemble. And because this is asking for a printout, it will take a bit longer, but we are rewarded with a wonderful printout. The nice thing about the PDF emulation is that printing to the virtual printer is much faster than printing to the actual printer, especially for a 1027.
And there we go. There is our finished product. And if I actually go to the web front end real quick and grab the piece of paper and open it, we will see our revised printout. If we scroll down to the close routine, open, we can now see our instruction here assembled into its appropriate bytes sitting here at 23CB, which we will set a breakpoint for in just a moment. We'll go ahead and leave, and we find ourselves back out at the OSS DOS XL command processor. For the next bit, we'll actually load a debugging tool called Amoeba, which is a relocatable debugger uh, created by Amy Chen while she was working at Atari under Paul Lawton's systems group. This was a prototype. It was never officially released and was found a couple of years ago on a pile of disks from a former Atari employee. The first thing that Amoeba asks us for is where to put Amoeba in memory. And I'm wanting to put this well out of the way of everything else, seeing as I know exactly where my code actually starts at 2300, because the org is assembled at 2300, and I know that the code ends from my listing somewhere around 2500. I can put it anywhere above there, but to be safe, I will put it in page 40, aka 4000. And within a few moments there, we see the Amoeba debugger come up, ready to go. And I can, uh, if you already know, there are two screens to Amoeba. You can take and flip between them using uh, option. But if you know the command, you can go ahead and just type the command in, L for load, and we'll load in the binary that we just assembled. There we go, ready to go. And we're going to go ahead. We can, of course, um, do a listing, a display, hit the option key, and you can see oh, yeah, display. And if we look at, and let's say 230F, sure, 230D, doesn't matter. And we'll display it as memory instructions. We see the first few bits of our CIO handler ready to go right there. And if we take a look, we can see right there corresponding exactly to our listing. So far, so good. Even the, even the branches here, and this is why it's so important, especially when developing an assembler, why a listing is so vital. It helps keep your head sane. So with that, we go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint. We need to figure out where to set the breakpoint. And for that, we'll look at our listing here. We'll go down to Close. And close begins at 23CB, and I want to put the breakpoint right here at 23CB. This will tell the debugger, once we reach this address, to stop everything, come back to the debugger, and await further instructions, which in my case will be a trace instruction and a series of trace instructions. So we'll go ahead and use B to set breakpoint, S to set. Breakpoint zero, they can have from zero to seven or eight of them. And we set the hex value, 23CB. Uh, the repeat value is not really needed here, but it's there. There's the breakpoint. Bam, ready to go. At this point, we can go ahead and start our handler. 
which once it installs itself, it will call dosvec, which will drop us back to dos. So there we go, FujiNet ready, everything looks good so far. And as a matter of fact, if we actually take and kind of move this out of the way here, you can see that the driver is doing exactly what it's supposed to, giving the status request and reporting appropriately. At this point, I can go ahead and we can go to cartridge. And we can start using and testing out the various bits of functionality. to make sure that everything works correctly. We can see right there the error 165. Uh, that's working as expected. You can see as part of the open request from the monitor that uh, we get the open request followed immediately by, oh, there was an error. So that causes my CIO handler to immediately grab the status. The last byte contains the error code, and we pass that all the way back after a little bit of transformation. Error 165 file name. Sure, no problem. Close. We'll go ahead and close number one here. Now, if we actually take a look, and the thing that I'm actually checking here is to make sure that the interrupt routine is actually doing what it's supposed to do. And we can see here in the open routine that it's calling ENPRCD, which sets the uh, interrupt enable bit on PACTL. Right here. So we're looking for this value right here, 3D, which corresponds to decimal 61. Let's trick it out and make sure that that actually happened. D302 corresponds to 5418. 61 did indeed happen, so the interrupt is turned on and we're good there. Now we're going to go ahead and try to close. And you can see right there, it immediately jumped back to Amoeba to allow me to take and debug what was happening. It threw me back in the go, and we can kind of see our first instruction, 23CB, which if we go back to it here on our listing, two three C B J uh, J S R D I P R C D which corresponds to this right here. And lo and behold, that is exactly what we see. 24B3. 24B3. Great. So that's working. So let's trace this and see that it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. Trace. And we'll step through each instruction. We set 3C, set the result to D302, return back from subroutine, which immediately causes us to come back to grab the device ID and finish up the rest of the function. Now, since we already went and jumped into SIOV, we don't want to take and crawl too far into this, so we can simply take and go at this point. And we can see right there that the close completes Everything is good. If we take a look real quick, we can actually see the close happening here. This is a command C for close. We see the close actually happening. All good here. And finally, we check the value in D302 to make sure that it's correct. And sure enough, there it is. Value is 60. So all good. So this is really, in a nutshell, this is the process that I literally am taking to take and develop out the uh, individual parts of the, of the code here. Taking the bits and pieces that I write in, um, that I write in the uh, C code here, if we actually go to it, that I write in the C code, converting that into assembler and testing each of the results as I do them. 
So uh, more to come. Just wanted to take give you guys a little bit of a glimpse into the process that I'm doing here. So until next time, guys, have fun.